now. Um, so here we are. Um, and what we're going to do today is we're, this is the overview. We're going to do some quick introductions and then um, we're going to divide this into three parts. The first part is Sierra is going to uh, talk to us about content creation and the tools that uh, she uses um, to create content and a path, how to build a path through that. Um, and then online engagement and income and um, how, how to make money online. And then in the lightning round, it's gonna be really the opportunity to ask questions um, and, and to, but throughout you can, you can ask us questions using the, um, the chat and hopefully one of us will be able to see the chat. I haven't figured that out yet, but I will. And at the end, we're gonna give you a worksheet on how to build your tech stack and roadmap. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Sira um, and ask her to introduce herself. Tell us about you, Sira. Hi everyone. So I'm Sira Massetti and um, I work at Amazon. I have a full-time job at Amazon, but uh, I also uh, am a content creator. And uh, it's like if I have like two full-time jobs and I love I love that. And um, so I started as a content creator, uh, as a writer actually in 2015. And uh, I, I built my own blog and I wrote on Quora. And then um, last year, um, I started to write on Medium. And uh, Medium uh, was a life changer for me because there um, the standard is very, very high. And on Medium, Medium is a platform where you can also uh, earn money writing. It's a great platform for um, content creators who love to write. So basically there um, during uh, last year, uh, maybe a bit more of, the, of an year. Um, I've been writing articles and uh, several of my articles have gone viral, completely viral. So uh, I've learned some strategies to um, create content that sells, that goes viral. And um, I've learned really a lot during um, this uh, path on Medium, during my journey on Medium, I'm still learning a lot. And I'm not only a content creator on Medium, but also on some social media platforms such as LinkedIn and Instagram. So today I'm here to uh, share with you these strategies and uh, the tools that I use and how I create content that people actually want to, um, to read. So, Fantastic. Yeah. This is going to be great, S assuming I can manage the slides. Um, so we're going to dive into um, part one, uh, the content and the tools. And we're going to start out by really just asking you to, you know, define for yourself and, um, you know, are you a writer? Are you a visual person? Do you um, want to be a video on video or do you want to do podcasting and, and blogging? Um, so that is the first part. And then we go to the second step, which is choosing your platform. And uh, we've put together a whole list of resources here. And Sarah's going to walk you through um, how to pick which ones are right for you. Take it away. So uh, here you can see a few platforms like the um, main ones uh, where you can create content and publish your content so depending on the type of content that you create you can pick some of the, these platforms so for example if you uh, like to make videos i would say that youtube is the perfect platform for example because on youtube you can share your videos and uh, uh, over time your videos are going to uh, gain more visibility and uh, you can also earn a lot of money on youtube uh, by just creating videos. And um, other great platform to share your content are, for example, LinkedIn, where you can create content, create posts, and, uh, you know, um, um, find potential clients through your own content. Then Instagram um, is another uh, great platform uh, where you can share your content, uh, visual content, so photos and, uh, you know, for example, on Instagram, I um, share, I don't share many pictures, but I share posts. So um, it's a great pl platform where you can share uh, a very diverse um, content, like pictures, posts, uh, reels, videos, 
And then uh, we have Medium where uh, for writers, uh, it's for me, at least for me, is like the best platform um, ever because um, you can create your articles there and uh, you can really just publish your articles and you really have a lot of visibility more than you would have with your own blog. Um, then other interesting platforms are TikTok for also for, for videos, for short video, videos and Pinterest. Pinterest uh, is an amazing platform. I'm starting to know it, to, to getting used to it. It's a platform where you can share pictures, videos, where you can create your own picture and uh, um, by optimizing it through keywords, um, you can use it to uh, drive traffic to, for example, uh, your own blog posts, to your own website, or for example, to a Medium article or to a YouTube video. So these platforms are amazing. Um, you can pick yours uh, depending on the type of content that you, that you create. Right, I think that's all That's all really fantastic. I think the important thing to keep in mind is that um, you wanna limit yourself to just, you know, maybe three platforms, particularly when you're getting started. Um, trying to be everything to everybody on every platform um, can be really challenging. And, you know, the way that the platforms work, you can write great content on Medium and have it fail on LinkedIn and vice versa. You can create you know, content that goes viral on, on LinkedIn and fails on Medium and Instagram. So just um, each on over here on the right, I tried to um, compile some resources that give you more in-depth descriptions of how each one of these platforms work because their algorithms work very differently. Um, and you'll, you'll learn to perfect those as you go, but um, sticking with one or two platforms to start will be more than enough. So really, you know, choose from the list about you're trying to reach. And then the second point is, is that the goal of using the platforms is to harvest names from those lists and to, and to take them from being their content to making them, to being your readers. Um, and so Sira, for example, has um, a, a way to sign up for her newsletter um, right on her Medium blog. And um, that's one of the things we're gonna cover um, as well. These are the free blogging tools. Have you used any of these? Which of these of you have you used? Sarah? Me? Yeah. Uh, well, I tried Wix once. Uh, it's it's nice, but it's it's a bit, I found it like a bit limiting. So uh, mainly, uh, I mean, I'm on this. Uh, I mainly use uh, WordPress um, for my own blog, Medium, and LinkedIn and Instagram. Substack, I tried it, but honestly, I tried it once and then I left it there. Even because, uh, as you said before, I didn't want to, you know, uh, overwhelm uh, myself with too many platforms. So um, I just chose to, you know, uh, stick with just three or four platforms. And uh, but these are all great, uh, great tools uh, if if you're, you know, if you're starting out as as a um, blogger. Um, so yes. So I'm trying Substack now. I'm launching mm -hmm. a new publication on Substack and um, I'm just, and the nice thing that I understand about Substack is that you can do subscriptions and you can do all the billing and you can manage all the email lists and all of that is contained within Substack. The downside is, is that they take a pretty hefty commission um, and, um, and for the premium version, it can get expensive. However, there is a free version for publishing. As long as your newsletter is free, Substack doesn't charge you. Um, so that that's sort of the upside and downsides of Substack, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, but there's there's a lot more information, particularly from uh, Casey Botticello on on publishing on Substack. Yes, definitely. So um, regarding how to um, generate ideas when, when it comes to create content, um, I find that the first rule, first of all, the first rule, the, mo the most important rule of content creation is to uh, consistently create 
high quality content that people want, that people uh, desperately need. So uh, how do you know what people want to read, what people want to watch, what people want to listen to? Um, you know, Google is like the first place you should go if you want to know uh, what people are looking for. Um, because uh, on Google, you can really see, for example, what uh, are the keywords that get uh, the most searches. And you can do it um, with, uh, I, I personally do it with uh, Uber Suggest. That is um, a tool created by Neil Patel. I don't know if it rings a bell, Neil Patel. And uh, so, um, Uber Suggest is a website created by Neil Patel where you can search for a keyword and you can see on a, in a specific country the search volume of that keyword. So you can see the popularity of the keyword, for example. Uh, you can look for uh, dating advice, for example, a relation, or relationship advice as a keyword. And you can see, for example, in the United States, the search volume for that keyword. Now, um, you can download a plugin, uh, sorry, not a plugin, an extension for Google Chrome. And so um, instead of going to Uber Suggest, the website, you can simply uh, search for a certain keyword on Google. And uh, through this Chrome extension, you will see directly on the uh, Google search result page, you would see um, the, 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 um, the search volume for that keyword. And for all the search results, you will see, for example, the domain authority of that, of that specific website. And um, you will also understand if it's difficult to rank for that specific keyword or not. So uh, I know this is a lot of information, but the main point is that uh, Uber Suggest is a great way um, to uh, find uh, which um, topics are important to people, which uh, topics you want to create content around. And you can do it through uh, definitely Google uh, with Uber Suggest, with the extension Uber Suggest. Then Medium obviously is a great way as well to uh, generate um, ideas uh, and to find topics to write about because you can see what's trending. And uh, <clears throat> obviously, Answer the Public is another amazing tool. Quora. Quora is great because on Quora, you can see what people, what, what question people are asking. So uh, you basically see exactly what people want to know, um, which type of questions are trending. For example, if you write about um, cooking, food, um, you can see on Quora what people tend to ask. So if people are looking for recipes, if people are looking for recipes to um, lose weight, whatever, you know, uh, you can see what's really trending. And so you can create content around what you find there on that platform. And then uh, here I can see other uh, tools, headline analyzer which is great because you can see, you can, um, I, I tried it once. Uh, you can basically um, write your headline, the title of, of an article or a video. And uh, <clears throat> basically headline on the analyzer gives you a score, right, Sean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it scores your headline um, and it's rather formulaic. Um, you know, they tend to favor how to, they tend to favor seven different ways, they tend to favor, and then they want you to put some, you know, emotion verb or emotion adjective in it and, you know, pump it up and it's a little clickbaity. Um, but um, I think it's, I think it's good for people who are not in the habit of writing headlines. Um, same with the social message analyzer and the email subject line tester, it really sort of gets you into the ballpark of what works. You know, it helps you figure out what what is likely to work and what is likely to fail um, mm -hmm. as a headline, as a social message, or or um, as an email subject line. Mm -hmm. So co-schedule, and it's all free. Um, I meant to ask you: is the is the Chrome extension free um, for for Uber Suggest? 
Mm -hmm. yeah. It's free. Uh, the only uh, the only thing that is not free is um, using. Uh, I mean, the, the extension is completely free, so you can do the keyword research for free on Google with the extension. Uh, the only thing is that uh, there are other features of Uber, so just if you go directly to the website, uh, so you can search for three keywords per day, something like that. For mm -hmm. with a free version, with a premium version, you have access to more information. Now, actually, I don't remember exactly what features you have access to with the premium version, but yes, the extension is completely free. Okay, well, I'll add Uber Suggest to this slide before mm -hmm. we end okay. up with that. Images. So you put Canva as number one. Thank you so much. I love Canva. It's amazing. As I told you before, um, on Instagram, I publish quotes. So how do you publish a quote on Instagram? You have to create a nice image with a quote. And so uh, Canva is great for that because you can really do it in many ways. You can put like, for example, a background picture and then uh, you can um, find a way to uh, write a quote on the, on the background picture. Um, but you can also regulate the opacity of the background picture and uh, the transparency so that the text is visible over the image, you know. Um, but this is just an example on Canva. You can really create a lot of content. You can create even, for example, um, if you're creating a print on demand products, you can create the design on Canva and then you go to the other tool to, for, to create the product, you know. You can really do many things on Canva. So yes. Then slides. I'm not very familiar with that actually. And splash. It's amazing if you're looking for a for uh, a picture for um, you know the feature uh, image for your blog post, and um, you can use um, any picture there. Um, you don't have to. You just have to. Um, for example, when you write on Medium. Um, you have to add a picture of, you know, um, uh, how do you call it? The feature. Attribution. Mm -hmm. you, you, yes. you give attribution like this to the, um, to the source. Exactly. To, to the so, on Museo. And through um, Unsplash, you can, you can just copy and paste the attribution of each picture you use. And uh, there are also other, other platforms like Unsplash where you can find images like Pexels, if I'm not wrong, mm -hmm. and others. And then there are some others that you have to pay for. They are not very expensive. And since every writer on Medium uses Unsplash, Pexels, and these free platforms, sometimes um, you want to, you know, um, pick some um, platforms where you have to pay a little bit, but you have a picture that you're the only one to use because it, you paid and most people don't want to pay. So um, the platform I use sometimes is iStock, uh, which is, I'm going to write this in the chat. Mm -hmm. And there is also another one, Shutterstock. If I'm mm -hmm. not wrong. I think they're both listed in this article down here. Okay, amazing. 11, okay. 11 sites. Um, but in the case they're not, it's good to mention them. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So yes, for the images, it's uh, the, the best thing to do at the beginning, I think, is definitely uh, try free platforms like Unsplash and Pexels, definitely. Because images there are high quality, uh, nice, and uh, free. So. so one note about Canva is that you can use Canva also to create infographics as well as images. And the infographics do better on LinkedIn than um, stock photography does. Apparently stock photography on LinkedIn gets, gets you sort of demoted. Um, mm -hmm. The algorithm favors original images um, as, well as, as well as Pinterest. Um, mm -hmm. Their algorithms favor um, infographics and diagrams and charts and things that look, you know, more, but yeah, they like, they like the stuff that's made better, but a medium really loves Unsplash. Yes. And what about museum app? I've, I've never heard of it. So I just heard about that one. Um, uh, museo is, um, um, what somebody posted this the other day and it's great because 
Um, it will search the Art Institute of Chicago, the, the Rijksmuseum, the Harvard Art Museums. It searches on the New York Public Library, and this is all public domain. So things that are over, I don't know, 80 years old or something like that, um, enter into the public domain, they no longer, the copyright um, is no longer applicable. So for example, all the works of the Renaissance and um, Rembrandt and um, Leonardo, of course, are all, you can use them, um, but you need to get a, um, a public domain image. And all of these images here are free to use. Um, and they come in various sizes and you can download them. Um, mm -hmm. And it's literally millions of, of art, artworks. Amazing, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, I just found out, um, uh, mm -hmm. Felicia Sullivan posted it three days ago on LinkedIn. Oh, okay. it's a, I think it's okay. a new app. So it's, it's really pretty great that somebody aggr aggregated all this stuff mm -hmm. here into one place. Um, so we're gonna move into part two, we're right on time. Um, for this. And in this part, we're going to talk about, um, you know, creating content that engages, but also um, how to make money, both important topics. Um, and we talked about um, this idea of moving people off of Instagram and into your mailing list, moving people off of Medium and into your mailing list. And this guy over here, Russell Brunson, uh, the CEO of ClickFunnels, talks about traffic you own and traffic that you don't own. And the trouble with social media is that um, when you post something on LinkedIn, they'll show it to 10% of your followers. And if it doesn't get traction in the first hour or two that it's up, it, goes, it drops to 1%. And so the way that the algorithms work is that they work based on engagement. And if you don't have the engagement, then it pushes them down and fewer and fewer people see them. Um, recently, Sarah did a post on LinkedIn that went absolutely viral. It was amazing. It had just tens of thousands of viewers and 16,000, 17,000 interactions and uh, probably nearly a thousand comments. Um, and I ended up doing a comment on there, which was a link to an article of mine, and she ended up driving 2,000 viewers to my comment, um, I mean, to, to, to my article on, on Medium. So the idea of moving traffic from one platform to another is fairly tricky because they don't want you to move from one platform to another. Medium doesn't want you to go to LinkedIn and vice versa. So um, she's done an amazing job of doing this, but she also has created um, a MailChimp account. And that's what I'd like her to talk about is working with MailChimp um, as a way of moving people from the platforms into her mailing list. Mm -hmm. Yes, and vice versa, actually. Now I will explain you how. Um, so basically from Medium, um, I, well, you cannot always do that, but at the bottom of my articles, basically, I add uh, a link to my um, to, to subscribe to my newsletter. OK, and um, basically um, every week or when I when I publish an article, um, I basically um, send an email to all the subscribers with the articles I publish on Medium. So those subscribers. Uh, go and see my read my articles on Medium. So there is engagement with the articles on Medium, and Medium algorithm likes that, you know, because it's as you were explaining before about uh, LinkedIn. It's something very similar. Something very similar happens on Medium. Engagement is very important during the first hours. So basically, um, at the beginning, I just um, created the, the the newsletter, and uh, I let people subscribe to my newsletter. And uh, um, a few articles went viral. So many people subscribed and many people who were interested in uh, the niche I write about. So relationship, self-improvement. And uh, so when I sent out emails uh, with the articles I just published, people just, I mean, there is a very high um, click rate, click through rate. So 
what happens here. That obviously uh, when you create um, a newsletter and you want people to subscribe to your newsletter, the most important thing you have to do is to uh, deliver on your promise. So if you promise people, okay, if you subscribe to my newsletter, you will receive this type of content, then you have to send them that type of content. Otherwise they will uns unsubscribe. So uh, it's very important to uh, do that well, because uh, if you do it well, it's going to, um, it's going to help you a lot with uh, the engagement with your content. So you can, uh, you, you really um, can, um, if you know your audience and if you uh, give them the content that they want, uh, you 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 can send them anything. So you create a YouTube video and you need engagement with that video. You send the video uh, through the newsletter to the to to your mailing list, and people will start engage engaging with your video. And the same is for uh, a LinkedIn post or a Medium article. You know, and uh, I um, I mean among all these platforms, I only know Mailchimp and ConvertKit. And these two are great. ConvertKit, yes, you have to pay, but there is also a free version. For the first 1,000 subscribers, I think, it's free. Mm -hmm. Then after 1,000 subscribers, you have to pay depending on the number of, of subscribers. And that's, yes, so um, these are very powerful tools because if you are able to drive uh, people from a platform to your uh, mailing list, you have direct access to your audience. You don't have to rely on Medium to uh, have visibility. You can directly send an email to, to your subscribers. And that's amazing. You only have to do it well because I repeat, I mean, people can unsubscribe anytime. So remember to do it really well. Otherwise, you know, you can, you can lose subscribers. Yeah. And I, and I have to really reinforce the idea that, that, um, you know, one of the quotes that I like is the money is in the list and everything that we're doing here, the reason for creating the content, the reason for being on the platforms is to build a list. Um, you know, basically the only reason that the New York times is as popular as it is, is because they have a huge mailing list. All of marketing functions on the list, whether you're running a startup, a small business, a coaching business, a consulting business, or you're, or you're a content creator, the money is in the list. And what that means is that that is really the primary takeaway from today is to build your list. And all of the tools that we're giving you today are intended to help you do that. Both MailChimp and MailerLite, you can use completely for free. Um, they're both very easy to use platforms. Don't waste a lot of time evaluating. Read Jim's article about which one is right for you. Pick one and get started. You can do it in an hour easily. Um, and ConvertKit is fabulous. Active Campaign is fabulous. ClickFunnels has a cult following that you would not believe. Um, I put ClickFunnels on here because if you're embedding videos and you're making complex um, um, uh, funnel pages, then you'll want to look into uh, click funnels. But um, the otherwise, you're really uh, the 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 free tools are more than enough to get you started. Um, which brings me to um, one of my favorite subjects, which is LinkedIn bio. On Instagram, on LinkedIn. Um, and on medium, you get basically one link that you can put in your thing. And you can send them directly to sign up for your newsletter, or you can send them to a place where they have a couple of options. And one of the ways to do that is to use Linktree or Shorebee or LinkedIn profile, um, which allows you to send them to a single link, which says sign up for my newsletter, download my white paper, or, um, uh, or book a call with me. Um, this is one of the most underused features on all of these platforms. <laughs> From, I agree. And um, so, and so, there's um, some 
some uh, ways to learn more about that. You may just want to do what, what a lot of people do is just send people to a single option, which is you know to use that link to either go to your website or to go to your signup page. The problem that I have with sending people to a website is that they're given too many choices once they get there and it's not a, a strong call to action. Whereas sending them to um, sign up for your newsletter is a much stronger call to action. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn it back over to Sira to talk about all of the fabulous productivity tools that are out there. Um, and uh, um, all of these have links um, so when you get a copy of this, you can go in and check them out, but um, she's going to run through some of the ones that she uses. So as you can see, there are many, many tools that you can use. They're all very useful. Um, in particular, what I use, um, since I'm a writer, I mean, when I create content, I basically write. So uh, what I mainly use is, um, among all these tools, is Grammarly, which is just amazing, and title case converter. So uh, Grammarly um, is a tool uh, that basically uh, tells you, it's a proofreader. So basically it tells you, uh, uh, it highlights every word that you uh, wrote, um, every mistake you make, but it uh, highlights with a different colors depending on the type of mistake. So if it's a grammar mistake, you will see the, the word highlighted in red, for example. Or if it's just a form mistake, um, is it syntax mistake, uh, you will see it highlighted in uh, green. So um, it's great also because it gives you a score uh, at the end of the text. You can click um, um, on an icon and it, it gives you basically a score of the, of. Uh, it just gives you a score to your article, uh, which can be 80, 90, 100. And so 100 is, you know, free of mistake, the form is perfect, and so on. 80, it could be maybe it doesn't have grammar mistakes, but it has syntax mistakes, uh, things you can write better. Uh, maybe you used too many adverbs, and so Grammarly tells you that. And uh, so it's, it's a uh, it's a great proofreader. You know, if you need a proofreader, but you don't want to pay proofreader, Grammarly is great. I use the um, premium version. I paid for, I mean, I'm, I paid for it um, yearly because you can uh, pay for it monthly or yearly. I <clears throat> There was a discount when I signed up. So um, I just um, paid for it and it's worth it. I mean, the premium version is really good. It's not 100% accurate. That's the only thing. Sometimes you you will see that it's kind of, you, you will recognize that some things, some suggestions that it gives you are not actually correct, uh, but it's all, I mean, it, you will always see that it's something that you can see um, yourself, but usually it's really great because <laughs> you can always overlook like small typos, small mistakes, and Grammarly always reminds you of that. And um, regarding title case converter, is am it's amazing because for, uh, you know, titles uh, where you want to uh, write it well, um, uh, in order to, I mean, if you don't know exactly which words uh, go, um, need the capital letter, you just copy paste your title uh, written in sentence case, sentence case, and it will convert your title to, <coughs> sorry, title case. So it's just amazing. It's all automatic, it's free. You copy paste back to your article, the title once it has been converted. Amazing. And then um, there are many other tools that you can see here. For example, Slack is another amazing tool, uh, for example, uh, to communicate with your peers. <clears throat> for example, I have a mastermind group with other writers and uh, we use Slack to communicate. We share our articles there, our drafts, and it's amazing. So yeah, these are um, many, many tools. I'm sure you already know many of that of them and uh yes great list by the way <laughs> thanks 
I added a couple that I think people probably haven't heard of. Nimbus is a, is a, is a competitor to Evernote. And the reason that Nimbus is good um, is, in Evernote are good are for people who do a lot of research. Um, so if you're putting a lot of links in your articles and you're um, citing to authority or you're writing white papers and you're doing the research, um, these can be a good way to bookmark things rather than just using bookmarks in that way you can access them easily um, and have and have a record of of all of of all of your notes um, for creating that and then um, iMovie um, I had paid for some expensive video editing software only to find out that my Mac came with iMovie um, which is a perfectly good tool um, for editing videos um, and a, a lot easier to use than some of the more expensive ones um, I found. And for the basic editing that I need to do, um, iMovie more than meets my needs for free. And then this last one, attract.io, um, is good for people who want to create a lead magnet. If you want to create um, a, a short white paper or a short how-to guide or a short checklist kind of um, freebie thing to give away, um, this is a, a great free tool which gives you templates for these um, and you can just do it online. Um, so I think that is probably it. Oh, and then the tiny URL and the bit.ly. Um, if, you, if you have a long, ugly link and you wanna shorten it, that's the way to do it. They're both free as well. That's Let's talk idea. about making money. So uh, these are all platforms where you can potentially make money. And uh, as you can see, the first uh, one is Medium with Newsbreak and Vocal Media. Um, now, about uh, the difference among them, I can tell you that me Medium is bigger and obviously it's, uh, you can potentially earn uh, much more than the other two platforms. However, Newsbreak and Vocal Media are growing and it's possible to make money on them too. Um, also, one thing that you can do, uh, if you publish an article on Medium, you can always republish it on Newsbreak, so you have nothing to lose. You can always try. Uh, and an important thing about Newsbreak is that um, they actually uh, like localized content for the United States. So if you write an article on Medium and you want to republish it on Newsbreak, a good idea is to localize it. For example, you write an article about <clears throat> dating, tips for dating, whatever. I don't want to uh, get into uh, too much detail. Uh, but uh, if you republish that article on Newsbreak, you can, for example, localize it for LA. So tips for dating in LA, you know? Mm -hmm. And that way Newsbreak, the algorithm in Newsbreak will uh, like the article more. It will give it a higher score and it will give it more visibility. And so um, this is my advice if you want to use the two platforms. Uh, vocal media, I'm not very familiar with it. I just published an article there. I just remember that they said that you cannot republish content from other platforms if, if I'm not wrong. So I think you cannot do the same thing you do from you can do from medium to news break. But still you can publish articles there and you can pay, uh, you can earn money and they usually pay thousand views so it's i mean it's worth trying it i would say try the three platforms and then you see uh which one you like more honestly i think medium is your best bet it's mm -hmm. it's the best one for me and that's what the product writer, basically says is is you know the um um uh, what's her name wrote um this article um <laughs> sorry i'm blanking on her name um and uh, um, but at any rate, yeah, you can read the article and it, it basically shows you that news break, it's kind of hard to understand how you get paid, how the articles are weighted, exactly what, you know, it's a little complicated. Medium's more straightforward. Yes, I, I agree. agree. And I think that news break is hard to understand because it's, it's new. I mean, it's not new, the platform, uh, but the content um, creator program is new. So I think they're still trying to understand how they want to do things. So 
Um, for now, they like localization, uh, but still things can change. So since they're new, I'm pretty sure things will change and it will become more straightforward. But for now, I'm pretty sure that Medium is the best platform if you want, if you're a writer. Then Substack, as you said before, it's, it's also a great platform uh, if you have your subscribers and uh, especially if you have subscribers who are willing to pay for your content. And obviously YouTube is the best one uh, for videos. So if you create uh, visual content videos, it's great. Etsy, it's a great platform and you can use it both for uh, handmade products or also for print on demand con um, print on demand products it's amazing and um, on youtube i saw many videos of people who really made a lot of money on Etsy. you have to understand the algorithm here as well but there's potential in that platform and then uh, regarding linkedin as we said before it's a great platform to find job or to find potential clients if you're a freelancer. So if you create content on LinkedIn, people will find you more easily. And uh, obviously you can really land many clients. So that's great. Also AngelList is amazing. Fever, Upwork, then self-publishing self -publishing on Amazon is an, another amazing um, opportunity through Kindle. And then Clarity. I didn't know about that, then um, Sean explained it to me how it works. It's another amazing platform. Maybe you want to, to mention it, right? Yeah, so with Clarity, um, basically uh, consultants can um, post their hourly rate um, and charge by the minute to take calls. And they book the calls through Clarity. You have the call with the consultant and all the billing is handled through Clarity. Um, so you set your hourly rate at $150 an hour that breaks down to, you know, I don't know, $2 and something a minute. Um, and that, um, uh, the length of the call, and then they're just billed directly through um, credit card or PayPal or, or what have you. So, um, and it, it's free to sign up. So, you know, why not? Um, Upwork and Fiverr um, are on this list. I, um, I don't care for these platforms. I think that they are um, exploitive, um, but I know that there are freelancers who have made money um, and some who, and, and a very small percentage of whom have done very well on these platforms. Um, it, I, I say that to caution people um, about them because they tend to favor a non-living wage. Um, and I think that um, the idea that you should be able to go out and get quality content created for $5 is not, is not good. Um, mm -hmm. they, yes. they really, um, so I'm, I'm sort of giving them the you know, take a look, um, but do some reading about them because there's there's some issues there. I agree. I agree on that. I tried Fiverr uh, both as a seller and as a as a client, and honestly, I didn't like it very much because if you want to um, if you want people to buy your services, basically you have to offer very low prices, and it's okay at the beginning, but over time, it you know. You don't want to get paid five dollars for a lot of work, you know. And also, as a client, I tried it for a proofreader, for also for my blog, for um, a content creator, and the service was very—I mean, it was low quality, honestly. And so, I don't—I don't recommend it as a platform, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, for clients and for freelancers, I don't like it. I I like more uh, freelancer. Freelancer is a very good platform. Mm -hmm. It's more professional. Um, as as so is Flex Jobs. So Flex Jobs, um, mm -hmm. I think I think it's paid, but you can search for free. You can find contract work. You can find gigs. You can find part time stuff. You can even find full time 
work through flex jobs, but the employers are vetted, right? And so um, they've, you know, they've they've sort of weeded out most of the scams, you know, and most of the um, people who are, um, oops. Um, so yeah, flex flex jobs is really good um, if you're looking to you know get ten hours a week or whatever kind of project work. Um, and then uh, this freelancing article is great. Make sure you read that. Um, Patreon um, is primarily used by artists um, and people who are looking for patrons to support them. So what you can do is, um, but it's also been used successfully by some writers. Um, so where you give private access to, um, you get a conference call with you once a month and um, they can ask you questions and they can do this for a dollar a month or five dollars a month or ten dollars a month. So it's a little bit um, like uh, having a subscription to you. It's kind of a way of consulting um, light. And uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, but again, there's an article about it. Read that. Um, and the self-publishing on Amazon article, we were talking about this before the call, this man who wrote this article has made over a million dollars um, selling, what kind of books? Novels. Novels, yeah, he's written 40 novels, um, self-published on Amazon. Um, again, it, there's money to be made on all of these platforms, but every single one of them requires learning the platform. And that's why um, when you get to your planning, part, you don't want to say, I'm going to be on all the platforms because every single one of them works differently and the time that it takes to learn them. So what we're trying to do is give you a path through, you know, this is how I'm going to make money. So how do you make money as a, as a content creator, Sarah? How do you do it? Which, which ones of these pay you? Mainly through Medium. Mainly, Mainly through Medium. Through, yes. Uh, I tried, as I told you before, I tried um, Fever and Upwork. Um, they are good opportunities, but you know, over time, you want to look for something like that pays you more. And uh, if you're a content creator, if you're a writer, medium pays can pay you really well if you consistently create high quality content. For video creators, I think YouTube is the best one, obviously. Yes. And obviously, if you like to write books, ebooks, self publishing on Amazon also is a great alternative. I'm trying that out. Um, I still haven't earned anything because I'm just trying it. And, uh, but it it's really works really well. And I know about many people who have earned uh, really well through Kindle, to, through Amazon Kindle. So, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, right now, Medium. And news break, obviously, yes. Right. So um, one of the other uh, people that I interviewed during Story 2021, Michael Thompson, um, he primarily writes on Medium and then attracts clients through LinkedIn. So it's a combination of um, Medium and LinkedIn, but um, he attracts um, uh, consulting clients by writing really personal content on Medium, and it's kind of ironic that a man who writes such personal content about his life, about his family, about his struggles, then attracts business consulting clients who find him very relatable. They find his life experience to be relatable, and they think that, you know, um, so he ends up uh, uh, coaching, uh, he said, you know, a lot of women who are sort of mid-career um, and have had struggles and are looking for, you know, a way to, um, you know, um, sort of, you know, hone their, hone their skills and, and move forward. So um, I really like the, the medium LinkedIn combo. I think that, um, it's that they really reinforce each other really, really well. Um, yeah. We're moving into the last 10 minutes, which is the lightning round. Um, and um, this is your opportunity to say, you know, this is what I'd like to do. Um, what is, do you guys advice for me um, in terms of 
uh, building, building my stack and my roadmap. And as you can see, we've created sort of a worksheet here, uh, as well as um, how to get in touch with um, both of us. Um, and, um, uh, you know, going back through the deck and looking at, you know, what, what do you do? What platforms are right for you? What blog tool um, would you pick? Um, what are you gonna What are you gonna write about, or talk about, or or video about um, the the tools for creating the images um, and the landing pages? Um, will you use a LinkedIn bio tool? Um, and which productivity tools do you want? And then finally, what platforms are right for you to get paid on? Um, and I don't know if anyone has asked any questions, but I encourage you um, to do so um, using using the chat function, um, which should work. Um, now, um, ironically, this morning I was um, we have I'm staying at my brother's this week because we're having uh, work done at home. And um, a friend of his is here who is a musician, a very talented musician. Um, and I sort of walked him through this, um, this, this pathway here. So he's a performer. Um, and I said, you know, um, Instagram and YouTube would be the platforms for him. Um, because um, Instagram, this is something that a lot of people don't know, favors their new tools. They invested a lot of money in Reels. They invested a lot of money in Instagram TV. And not a lot of people comparatively to the rest of their platform are using those tools. So if you create Reels and you create Instagram TV, they're going to, you're gonna get a lot more viewers than you are on, on regular posts, on stories. And so um, by doing short performances on IGTV or Reels every day, um, those would be a great way for him to um, uh, drive traffic. And so um, then, um, yeah. And so then um, combining that with a powerful LinkedIn bio page, would drive people to buy his new CD, to um, sign up for his email alerts for where he's playing and, and um, performing, and um, to um, uh, join his um, Patreon account or to follow him on YouTube. And so that's how that sequence would work and then the getting paid part would be the bigger his list gets when he releases a new CD or new song or is performing at a, con a concert someplace, he's able to invite the people to the actual event. Um, and that's how that would work. Um, so we have uh, one of the um, people wrote one of the attendees wrote, I am a voiceover artist and I don't create too much original content. I have most of the things that you mentioned. I don't know if I have a question. This is great, great content. So Sarah, let's talk about a voiceover artist and how a voiceover artist might be able to leverage these platforms um, uh, effectively. That's, that's a hard one, um, but I think we can come up with something here. I think that if I were talking to a voice of, what do you think, Sierra? Sorry? What do you think I'm about- sorry, um, I was answering a question <laughs> because there is also not only the chat, but also the Q and A. Um, oh, there's the, a Q and A uh, as well. No, sorry, I was multitasking. I didn't, I didn't hear. Okay, well, I'll take the voiceover question and you answer the other one and then. Okay, I'll... okay, sure. sure, sure. Um, so for the voiceover one, I think the thing to do would be mainly LinkedIn would be the platform because that's where people are probably going to be most likely to look be, be looking for that. 
And then I think um, that you would um, maybe want to create um, short pieces of content about voiceovers, um, things that you've encountered, um, uh, do's and don'ts, um, mistakes that people make hiring voiceover talent, um, that sort of thing. Um, but you know, maybe posting once a week. Um, I wouldn't use images for that on LinkedIn. And the other thing to remember is that then you put the link in the first comment. Don't put links in your actual posts on LinkedIn if you're taking them away from the platform. What I would take them to then is a LinkedIn bio page wherein they could listen to samples, voice recording samples of you. Um, and they could uh, find a way to engage with you, how to hire you. And then I would have a Calendly link for them to book an appointment with you um, and maybe um, maybe do an email newsletter if if that's not too much work. If that's too much work, then, then I wouldn't um, bother with the email newsletter, but would try to get something, um, maybe a, um, I have a podcast and website and all that. I think the consistency is really key. Yeah, consistency is the most important thing. Um, so the idea is to get them off of LinkedIn and onto your email list. So um, I would definitely get um, some kind of email list either for the podcast going or something like that so that people know what you're gonna be doing, when you're gonna be doing it um, and, you know, I think a monthly email is more than enough for most people, um, but that's that's the uh, that's what I think. I can't see the QA for some reason. Uh, it's on the bottom, actually. Like you know where you can find a chat. It's there is a Q and A um, feature on the left. Yeah. You can see? Yeah, but it doesn't do anything when I press the button. Okay. So only you can see it for some reason and I can't. Probably because mm -hmm. I'm the presenter. It opens, actually it opens a pop-up. But right now there are no uh, new questions. Oh, okay. Well, John also says I haven't aged in 23 years, which is when we used to work together at Thompson Publishing. Um, we're about at time. Um, if you do have questions or you would like to connect with um, either Sierra or me, um, please feel free to reach out. Um, probably LinkedIn is easiest to get a hold of us. Um, and, um, and of course, you all have my email address. Um, so if you have specific questions um, or would like somebody to walk you through building your stack, um, I think that. Uh, Either one of us would be more than happy to help you. And um, yeah, thanks everybody for attending today. Um, the slides uh, will be mailed out tomorrow along with the recording of this. Um, and uh, thank you, Sira, you've been amazing. Do you have any final words? No, I mean, I'm so happy we had this today. I'm really happy. So for anything, yes, you can reach out to either uh, Sean or me. Um, I will be very happy to answer any questions.